In the previous video, we've talked about most of the things we know so far about Valve's Steam Deck. If you haven't seen it, please check it out, the link is in the video description. Also, if you want to know everything there is to know so far about Valve's Steam Deck in one go, check out the episode of Frytech Podcast, episode 4. The links to that episode will be in the description, both to Apple Podcasts and YouTube. Or just search Frytech Podcast in your podcast player of choice. Now let's dive deeper into the details of Steam Deck. Let's talk more about the hardware of this device. Valve mentioned that it will support USB-C. However, they never quite cleared what kind of USB-C will it be. Is it USB 4, which is basically Thunderbolt 3 with really high speeds of up to 40 gigabits per second, or is it USB 3? On their tech page, it says that this USB-C has DisplayPort 1.4 alt mode support up to 8K 60Hz or 4K 120 and USB 3.2 Gen 2 support. But thanks to the completely brain dead USB forum, even that isn't specific at all because there are, get that, two different possibilities of what Gen 2 could mean. It can run either at 10 gigabits per second or at 20, which is quite a big difference. So which one is it? Who knows? At this point, it is absolutely clear, at least to me, that Valve should have done what Apple did and just used USB 4, which combines the best of all worlds, really. But I'm not sure if they actually went this route. And I would be somewhat disappointed if they didn't, especially because it is 2021 and they will ship most of their consoles in 2022. So USB 4 is a must at that point, in my opinion. If anything, to avoid all the unnecessary confusion, while providing the most to the users in terms of speed and ease of use. Mind you, Apple released their first USB 4 laptops in November of 2020. So they must have been in development like at least a year before. So they had a foresight back in 2019 to already use USB 4. Literally the same year that standard was even developed and announced. And I really, really hope Valve engineers also had the same realization, but somehow I am worried that they didn't. Because from what I can tell, USB 4 required support of DisplayPort 2.0 alternative mode, yet Steam Deck only supports 1.4, which is kind of a giveaway that Valve's engineers didn't really think things through enough and didn't decide to clear and eliminate users' confusion by going with simply USB 4. I mean, I consider myself to be quite a tech-savvy guy, yet even I am constantly perplexed and frustrated when it comes to the total mess that USB consortium has made out of USB free standard. It is just preposterous. Another thing that I'm slightly on the fence about now after researching it a bit more is NVMe SSD that Valve chose to use in their console. It has a very rare M.2 202030 form factor meaning it is 22 mm wide and 30 mm tall, while way more common type that you will find in modern desktop PCs is 2280 or 80 mm tall. Obviously, it's a big difference in size, but even if Valve would have gone with 2242, it would have opened up more opportunities for people to upgrade their systems in the future. Because not only 2230 SSDs are rare, but their max capacity, at least at the moment, is 1 terabyte while even 2242 form factor would have allowed for a potential 2TB SSD upgrade. Perhaps because 2230 SSDs are physically constrained by the amount of space they have for memory chips. I mean, Newegg, one of the biggest websites selling PC components, doesn't even have a separate section for 2230 type SSDs. That should tell you all you need to know about its popularity. No wonder, then, it costs quite a bit with Valve to upgrade your storage. I know, by the way, that Valve doesn't really want you to upgrade your storage. And here's where my another issue lies with Valve and their talks that they want you to see this console more like a PC. Well, if we should treat it more like a PC, why wouldn't you, Valve? I'm kind of a bit underwhelmed by the Valve's decision not to provide easy access to the SSD. It's not like they went Sony PS5 route and provided an expandable slot for your SSD that's just hidden under one easily removable cover. Although actually I've just learned that apparently that SSD slot on Sony's console is still not available for people to use. Which is rather ridiculous, considering how long PS5 has been selling at this point already. But Sony is a topic for whole another discussion. 
All I'm saying is that if Valve wants to be championing that motto or wear like PC, they should probably do a little bit of a better job because on a true PC, you can upgrade everything really if you want to. Another thing that I'm not really happy about is the position of 3.5mm headphone jack on the Steam Deck, which is located at the top edge of the device. Imagine if you are wearing the headphones that are connected to the top of the device like it is now, one of the two things will happen. Either your cable will be dangling over the screen, which is annoying, or the cable will be bent and had to go under the console, not only effectively reducing the length of the cable, but also introducing unnecessary stress and wear at the connection point. And now, if we consider that the most popular headphones out there are Apple's EarPods, or something similar from other phone manufacturers, which have rather short cables, it means that with 3.5mm jack on top, it could be quite uncomfortable to use the headphones. There is a reason why PlayStation and Xbox have 3.5mm jacks at the bottom of their controllers, because it is a really convenient and logical place. I've even sent an email to Gabe Newell with this message basically, although I'm sure he will not read or act on it, but I definitely wanted to mention it here, because I haven't seen any wired headphones in Valve's promotional materials, and if you would, I bet it would look really weird with the 3.5mm cable coming from the top. Nintendo has one in their materials, and it looks not that great really. I kinda see why Valve might have gone with that top 3.5mm jack placement, because they might expect people to just put their consoles on a desk and like connect mouse or something, and then if you had the jack at the bottom, it would have been pretty much impossible to stand the console upright. However, I kind of feel like Valve just went and kind of mostly copied the design of Nintendo Switch, to be honest, which isn't necessarily the bad thing, just to clarify, because Switch is a very popular handheld console. However, first of all, I don't get why would you want to connect anything really to the Steam Deck and put that tiny 7-inch screen further away from you. Second, they don't really have that folding stand that Nintendo has at the back of the Switch. So in Nintendo's case, I get why they placed jack on 3.5mm jack at the top, exactly because they have a built-in stand, adjustable built-in stand, and also because you can disconnect the Joy-Cons to play with your friends. It all makes sense in case of Switch. But with Steam Deck, not so much really. Besides, you still could have placed the port at the bottom by making some indentation in the console. I guess Steam Deck will be able to stand upright even without built-in adjustable stand switch style just because of the shape of the grips it has, but even if it can stand it could just as easily fall down again because there would be no angle to it. It's just straight up at the best. So overall, don't know, these are just some of my thoughts. I really enjoyed that when I was playing some PS4 games I was able to connect headphones directly to the controller and the cable was in the correct position and it was just overall a really good experience. I'm pretty sure they will not change anything for their version 1 of Steam Deck, so the only thing I can hope is that when they eventually update the console, fingers crossed, with newer hardware, they will actually address um, these issues I have mentioned here. Probably in convenient position of 3.5mm headphone jack, slow micro SD card slot, and most likely USB-C that's not a USB 4 port. So far, these are the three issues I see that will most likely impact in one way or another on the usability of this portable console. And this is obviously without talking about ergonomics, which I need to test myself before judging it. At a first glance, I was rather perplexed by the position of the buttons, um, especially ABXY cluster that are stacked like really close to the right edge of the device. But now... The more I think about it, the more I come to the conclusion that it won't be a problem. I personally really like Xbox controllers. I'm even still using old Xbox 360 wireless controller for my PC. And I really love its shape that basically mimics the shape hands naturally take when they rest. So when you hug the controller with its angled rounded top parts and widened bottoms in that kind of AA or like reverse W shape, if you get what I mean, it feels really good and natural, better than PlayStation controllers actually, at least for me. That shape means it's absolutely perfect for thumbs to move, no stress at all with this quick and easy sort of side swiping gestures, if you will, your thumb doesn't need to bend or go up and down or anything like that. It's really an amazing design. However, Steam Deck controls 
aren't the same at all. Not least because the top part of valve consoles, instead of trying to be more ergonomic and curved, is instead kind of just upright, and it is the bottom part that seems to curve a little more, which doesn't make too much sense to me really. I hope they've done enough testing to ensure it is comfortable to actually use, but at the same time, I'm not sure they needed to reinvent the wheel here, cuff cuff Tesla, and change the position of the buttons and controls quite so drastically. I get that they wanted to include their touchpads, and that's really nice that they did it, but they probably could have found a little bit different layout that would have worked maybe even better. One thing I think Valve was thinking about uh, with this layout is to encourage players to use right touchpad more instead of right stick, because if you think of that configuration, it would kind of be like Xbox controllers with their right stick at a lower position and the left stick at a higher position. But once again, without trying it out myself, it's all just thought exercises. I just hope the ergonomics and the positioning of the controls and their feel and quality and all of that will not hinder the enjoyment that this device could bring. To add just a few interesting points, the top part of the joysticks have sensitive surfaces, so it knows if you're resting your thumbs on the sticks or not. And what it does is activates gyroscopes, so you could assist your aim by physically tilting your device towards your target. You know, that stupid move we do sometimes when we like physically turn with the controller, uh, when we're like in some racing game or aiming, just to give us that like extra little bit of precision. Well, apparently this console and its controllers can actually do that. I'm not sure how useful that will be, I need to try that, but the idea I think is really cool and interesting. And it works both with thumbsticks and touchpads, obviously. So that's neat. Also, the back of the console has additional sets of pedals, or grip buttons as Valve uh, calls them, akin to Xbox Elite controllers. So that's cool, you could add additional features to them. One thing that I do not think I have seen at all in any of the released materials is the Steam Deck's dock station. So I think that product only exists as prototypes at this point, which I get, like, it's not absolutely necessary product, but they did announce it. And they have some schematics on their website, so they better be hurrying up with, you know, making them as well. Also, one thing to note is that none of the Steam Decks will include that dock with any bundle at any price listed so far. And that's kind of a bit disappointing because, and this is unavoidable comparison, Nintendo Switch not only comes with two joysticks that could be disconnected from the device for some playing with a friend type of scenario, but that console actually comes with a dock at free or $350. Also, thanks to a slight mistake on Valve's part, we've actually got some numbers about the pre-orders for these consoles. And although obviously pre-orders of $5 don't mean purchases, the numbers are still extremely impressive. After just first one and a half hours, people reserved more than 110,000 of Steam Decks, with basically about 70% of them going for the highest tier model, surprisingly. So this console, if Valve can actually deliver it in a timely fashion, is absolutely destined to be a successful product, no doubt about it. I'm somewhat sure that Valve themselves didn't think this product would be received as well as it was, and that it would sell in such quantities so quickly. Because the delivery dates right now show Q2 of 2022 for most or even all of their tiers. Which means that whoever Valve is partnering with, or wherever they manufacture this device, they didn't order in advance to produce like millions of these things. Like Apple, for example, does when they start manufacturing their next iPhone. And even without announcing anything, they order like 70 million devices to be produced. Clearly, Valve didn't do it, and they heavily underestimated the hype this device would get from the gaming and PC community, which is not a bad problem to have. However, I really hope they could now scale really quickly and work with their manufacturers to ramp up the production and deliver these consoles not in Q2, Q3 2022, but at least in Q1 2022. Let's see if Valve can actually play with the big boys and solve the logistical and supply chain problems at a really big scale. Because if this device will be out only in a year from now, basically, I'm sure AMD will probably create even better GPUs, CPUs, APUs, and this console could actually be released with already outdated components. Not that it would matter too much, 
because of the market and frame rate slash resolution that it targets. But still, since Valve is kind of emphasizing that it is a PC, in that market, people do like to get latest and greatest. So now it's really up to Valve to live up to the expectations and hype they've created. Okay, this video has already been quite long, so let's call it part two, and let's continue talking about Valve Steam Deck in part three, which will be linked in the description and on the screen. If you like this content, please subscribe to the channel and help me finally reach 1000 subscribers. I would greatly appreciate it. In part three, we will talk about what Steam Deck will mean for the future of portable gaming, the whole gaming industry, and if Sony, Microsoft, or other big players should follow the steps of Valve and announce their own portable consoles. If you want to know everything there is to know so far about Valve's Steam Deck in one go, check out the Frytech Podcast episode 4. The link to Apple Podcasts and YouTube will be in the description, or just search Frytech Podcast in your podcast player of choice. Don't forget to leave your thoughts about Steam Deck and the whole portable gaming industry in the comment section of this video. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.